Time for another Evilness Tier video. Today we're going to talk about The Last of Us Part 1, one of the best story-based game ever. Let's start. Bill. Now Bill's not exactly winning any popularity contests, but calling him evil? That's a stretch. First off, the guy's a survivor. In a world overrun by infected, he's managed to fortify an entire town. That takes skill and determination, not evil. Sure, he's gruff and paranoid, but can you blame him? Trust is a luxury in the apocalypse. His shoot first, ask questions never attitude is more about self-preservation than malice. Bill's not out there hurting people for fun. He's just trying to keep himself alive in a brutal world. Yeah, he set up deadly traps, but they're meant for the infected, not innocent travelers. Remember how he helped Joel and Ellie? He didn't have to do that. A truly evil person would have left them to fend for themselves. Bill put his neck on the line to get them a working car. Now, I'm not saying Bill's a saint. He's definitely got some issues. The way he treated his partner Frank wasn't great. But that stems more from emotional constipation than evil intent. In the end, Bill's just a complex dude trying to survive. He's not actively malicious, but he's no hero either. That's why he fits perfectly in the neutral tier. What do you think? Does Bill deserve a higher or lower spot on the evilness scale? Let me know in the comments. Next Sam. Sam's just a kid trying to survive in a world gone mad. He's not out there plotting world domination or infecting people for kicks. The little dude's just trying to make it to the next day. First off, Sam's relationship with his brother Henry shows he's got a good heart. He looks out for his bro and tries to keep their spirits up in tough times. Not exactly evil behavior, right? Sure, he can be a bit impulsive and reckless at times, but that's more about being a curious kid than having any malicious intent. Remember when he snuck off to play with that toy robot? Classic kid move, not an evil mastermind plot. Now, some might argue that Sam hiding his bite was selfish, but put yourself in his shoes for a sec. He was scared, confused, and didn't want to be left behind. It wasn't the right call, but it came from a place of fear, not evil. Even when Sam turns infected, it's not really him anymore. The real Sam wouldn't hurt a fly if he could help it. Bottom line, Sam's just a regular kid caught in an extraordinary situation. He's not actively good or bad. He's just trying to survive like everyone else. That's why Sam lands squarely in the neutral tier. He's not a villain, but he's not exactly a hero either. He's just... Sam. Now let's talk about Sarah. Spoiler alert. She's heading straight for the good tier on our evilness scale. I know, I know, we don't see much of her, but sometimes less is more, you know? First off, she's Joel's daughter, and we see her right at the start of the outbreak. Poor kid doesn't even get a full episode in the show or much game time, but what we do see, it's all good vibes. Remember how she got Joel that watch for his birthday? That's some thoughtful daughter stuff right there. She's out there thinking about her old man even when the world's about to go crazy. That's solid gold behavior. When things start going sideways, Sarah doesn't panic or do anything wild. She sticks with her dad and uncle, tries to stay calm, and follows their lead. No selfish moves, no throwing others under the bus to save herself. Just a kid trying to cope with a situation way over her head. Even in her final moments, man, that scene still hits hard. Sarah's main concern is her dad's safety. That's some next level selflessness right there. Now, you might say, but we barely know her. How can we put her in the good tier? Well, sometimes you don't need a ton of screen time to show your true colors. Everything we see from Sarah points to her being a good kid with a good heart. So yeah, Sarah lands in the good tier. She might not have had the chance to be a big time hero, but in the short time we knew her, she showed nothing but kindness and love. Now about Tess, and she's landing in the somewhat evil tier on our scale. Now don't get me wrong, Tess isn't out here twirling a mustache and cackling, but she's got some, let's say, morally gray areas. First off, Tess is a smuggler. She's not exactly running a charity here. She and Joel are in it for the profit, often dealing in stuff that's not exactly legal. Sure, it's a harsh world but there are probably less shady ways to make a living. Remember how easily she talks about killing people? Like when she suggests taking out Robert for crossing them? That's pretty cold, even in the post-apocalypse. 
Tess is also not above using violence to get what she wants. She's quick to threaten and doesn't hesitate to follow through. That's edging into some dark territory. Now you might say, but she helped Ellie in the end. True, but let's not forget she was initially in it for the guns. Her change of heart came pretty late in the game. That said, Tess isn't completely evil. She shows loyalty to Joel and ultimately does the right thing by sacrificing herself to help Ellie escape. That's why she's in the somewhat evil tier and not full-on villain status. Tess is complex, folks. She's got good and bad in her, but the bad edges out just a bit more. She's a survivor who's done some questionable things to stay alive and get ahead. So that's why Tess lands in the somewhat evil tier. She's not the worst person in The Last of Us world, but she's not exactly a role model either. What do you think? Is Tess too high or too low on the evil scale? Next. David. Oh David. Where do we even start with this guy? He's the leader we meet in the winter chapter and let me tell you, he's the perfect storm of evil. Let's talk about his cannibalism. Yeah, you heard that right. David's not just killing people, he's eating them and feeding them to his community. That's a level of depravity that's hard to top. He's literally treating other humans like cattle, but it gets worse. David's a predator in every sense of the word. The way he interacts with Ellie is straight up creepy. He's clearly grooming her, trying to win her trust while having sinister intentions. The game hints heavily at his pedophilic tendencies, which puts him in the lowest of the low category. Let's not forget his manipulative nature. David presents himself as a caring leader, a man of faith even. But it's all a facade. He uses this image to control his people and justify his horrific actions. That level of deception and hypocrisy? Pure evil. David's also a sadist. He enjoys the power he has over others and takes pleasure in their fear and pain. Remember that scene in the burning restaurant? The guy was toying with Ellie, drawing out her terror. That's not survival. That's cruelty for cruelty's sake. And here's the kicker. David doesn't have the excuse of just trying to survive like some other morally gray characters. He's chosen to become a monster. He's built a community based on fear, lies, and literal consumption of other human beings. To top it all off, David shows zero remorse for his actions. He believes he's justified in everything he does, which makes him all the more dangerous and irredeemable. So, yeah, David goes straight to the devil tier. He's not just evil. He's a perfect storm of the worst human qualities. Predatory, manipulative, sadistic, and utterly remorseless. In a world full of infected monsters, David proves that sometimes humans can be the real horror. That's why David earns his spot in the deepest, darkest pit of our tier list. He's the kind of villain that makes you want to take a shower after encountering him. Ellie, good tier. Throughout her journey, Ellie consistently shows compassion. Remember how she cares for Joel when he's injured? Or how she befriends Sam? That's good-hearted stuff right there. Ellie's also brave as hell. She's willing to risk her life for the greater good, knowing her immunity could be the key to saving humanity. That's some heroic motivation. Sure, she can be impulsive and has her dark moments, especially in part two. But at her core, Ellie's driven by love and a desire to protect those she cares about. Even when she does questionable things, it's usually out of a place of trauma or a misguided sense of justice, not malice. She struggles with the weight of her actions, showing she's got a solid moral compass. So yeah, Ellie lands in the good tier. She's not perfect, but in a world gone to hell, she's holding on to her humanity and trying to do right. Henry, neutral tier. Henry's a survivor, folks. He's not out there trying to save the world, but he's not trying to burn it down either. He's just a dude trying to keep himself and his little brother alive. On the plus side, Henry shows a lot of care for Sam. He's protective and tries to give his brother some semblance of childhood in a world that's lost all innocence. That's pretty admirable. Henry also chooses to team up with Joel and Ellie, showing he's capable of trust and cooperation. He's not just looking out for number one. But here's where it gets murky. Remember when Henry ditched Joel and Ellie to save himself and Sam? Not exactly a hero move, but also understandable given the circumstances. It shows he's capable of making tough, morally gray choices. Henry's not actively malicious, but he's not going out of his way to be a hero either. He's making compromises to survive, walking that line between self-preservation and helping others. 
In the end, Henry's tragic fate shows the toll this world takes on even decent people. He's not evil, but he's not a paragon of virtue either. He's just... human. So that's why Henry lands in the neutral tier. He's got good and bad in him, just trying to survive in a world that doesn't make it easy to be good. Moving on to Joel. Joel, our gruff protagonist, isn't your typical hero. He's complex, flawed, and yeah, sometimes he crosses lines that put him squarely in the somewhat evil category. Here's why. First off, let's talk about Joel's past. After the outbreak, he admits to being a hunter. You know, those guys who ambush and kill innocent people for their supplies. That's some dark stuff right there. He's actively participated in hurting and probably killing survivors, just trying to make it. Throughout the game, Joel shows he's capable of extreme violence. Now, I know what you're thinking. But it's the apocalypse. True, but Joel takes it to another level. He doesn't just kill, he tortures for information. Remember those interrogation scenes? That's not self-defense. That's crossing into evil territory. Joel's also manipulative. He lies to Ellie repeatedly, especially about what went down with the fireflies. He's denying her agency and the potential to save humanity, all for his own selfish reasons. Speaking of the fireflies, let's talk about that ending. Joel literally dooms humanity to save Ellie. He kills a bunch of people, including Marlene, who were trying to find a cure. From a utilitarian perspective, that's a pretty evil act. But here's where it gets complicated. Joel does all this out of love for Ellie. He's not cackling like a supervillain. He's a broken man who found something to live for and couldn't let it go. That's why he's in the somewhat evil tier and not full-on villain status. Joel's also capable of kindness and protection. He cares for Ellie, looks out for his brother Tommy, and even helps strangers sometimes, though often reluctantly. These moments of humanity keep him from falling into the deepest pits of evilness. But let's not sugarcoat it. Joel's hands are far from clean. He's done horrible things to survive and to protect what he cares about. He's not afraid to lie, steal, torture, or kill to get what he wants. In the end, Joel is a product of his harsh world. He's not evil for the sake of being evil, but he's definitely crossed lines that put him well into the morally gray area, tipping towards the dark side. So that's why Joel lands in the somewhat evil tier. He's not the worst person in the Last of Us world, but he's far from a hero. He's a complex, flawed character who's done both good and terrible things. Maria. Let's acknowledge that Maria runs a tight ship in Jackson. On the surface, it seems like a haven in a messed up world. But here's where it gets murky. Maria's leadership style? It's pretty authoritarian. She's got this whole my way or the highway vibe going on. Remember how she deals with outsiders. There's a lot of suspicion and not much room for debate. Then there's the way she handles resources. Jackson's doing all right, but you gotta wonder. At what cost? Are they turning away people in need to keep their comfort? That's a morally gray area right there. Let's talk about her relationship with Tommy. She's not exactly supportive of his desire to help Ellie in part two. You could argue she's being protective, but it also shows a certain callousness towards the greater good. Maria's also complicit in keeping Joel's lie about the fireflies from Ellie. She's helping maintain a pretty massive deception that denies Ellie her agency. Now don't get me wrong, Maria's not out here twirling a mustache and cackling, but her actions and decisions often prioritize her community's comfort over wider ethical considerations. That's what pushes her into the somewhat evil category. She's willing to make tough, sometimes morally questionable choices for what she sees as the greater good of Jackson. But, greater good is subjective, isn't it? So yeah, Maria lands in the somewhat evil tier. She's not a straight-up villain, but she's made choices that prioritize her in-group over wider humanitarian concerns. In the brutal world of The Last of Us, that might be understandable, but it doesn't make it right. Marlene. Marlene's got a complex moral code, but ultimately, her actions push her into evil territory. She's willing to sacrifice a child, Ellie, for the chance at a cure. Now, you might argue it's for the greater good, but man, that's cold. She's essentially condemning a kid to death without her consent. Marlene also leads the Fireflies, 
a group that's not afraid to use violence and terrorism to achieve their goals. They've bombed checkpoints and killed innocent people in their fight against Fedra. Let's not forget how she manipulates Joel and Tess into smuggling Ellie. She withholds crucial information and uses their desperation to her advantage. Marlene's also quick to order the death of Joel when he tries to save Ellie. No discussion, no compromise, just straight to execution. But here's why she's not in the devil tier. Marlene genuinely believes she's doing the right thing. She's fighting for a cure, for a better world. Her methods are brutal, but her endgame isn't purely selfish. So Marlene lands in the evil tier. She's done some seriously messed up stuff, but there's a twisted logic to her actions that keeps her from being pure evil. Now, let's talk about Robert. He double-crosses Joel and Tess, stealing their weapons to sell for a higher price. In the post-apocalyptic world, that's not just bad business, it's potentially condemning people to death. Robert's also not above using violence to get what he wants. He sends his men to kill Joel and Tess, rather than face the consequences of his actions. Let's not forget he's an arms dealer in a quarantine zone. He's profiting off the misery and conflict around him, likely fueling more violence in the process. When cornered, Robert immediately throws the fireflies under the bus, showing he has no loyalty or principles beyond saving his own skin. But why isn't he in the devil tier? Well, Robert's evil, but he's small-time evil. He's not out to destroy the world or hurt people for fun. He's just a selfish, ruthless opportunist. So Robert earns his spot in the evil tier. He's definitely a bad dude, but he's not the worst of the worst in the Last of Us world. There you have it. Marlene and Robert, both evil in their own ways. One for her extreme ends justify the means mentality, the other for his selfish disregard for others. What do you think? Do these two deserve to be in the same tier? Are they too high or too low? Let's debate in the comments. And that's a wrap. Which tier you would change? Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and subscribe.